Hello everyone, so today I want to talk about why I think you should read Sige, or as it's commonly translated in English, Records of the Grand Historian. So just to give you a bit of background information, uh, the records was written by a person called Si Martin, and he lived in the period from 145 BC to 86 BC. And most people think he completed the records in around 80, uh, 94 BC. So you can see that this book is more than 2,000 years old. So the records cover the history from the mythical Yellow Emperor, so people aren't entirely sure whether this person really did exist, all the way to Han Modai, who was the seventh emperor of the Han Dynasty, and that was a period where Sima Qin himself lived in. And just to give you a bit of, uh, just to give you the tragic backstory behind Sima Qin, so he was the son of a person called Sima Tam, and Sima Tam had a really ambitious project on a book that encompasses all of Chinese history. So before he could complete this project, he died, so he left it to his son to complete it for him. But in 99 BC, Sima Qin spoke out against the emperor. So this emperor, Hong Dai, he spoke out against the emperor, and that's why the emperor had him castrated. So being castrated is a huge thing during that time, so uh, most people after being castrated, most people would just consider committing suicide. But since Sima Qin had to complete this, uh, the records for his father, uh, he forced himself to live on. So during that period, he really did go through uh, truly tough times. So uh, people insulted him. Uh, he lost the respect from all his peers. People treated him as a joke. People laughed at him. So Sima Xin during that time went through a really really tough period. So uh, you can you can see that and uh, you can see how depressed he was in some of the things he wrote. So there's a letter he wrote to his friend. Uh, nowadays it's commonly known as the Bo Yam Siu Hing Su, and in this letter he tells his friends about his friend about uh, how tough the times are going for him. So you can take a look at this if you want to. It's a really long letter, but if you read it, you'll see just how depressed he truly was. So now let's let's talk about the different uh, sections the records are composed of. So the first section is called Bunge, and Bunge is about the history of rulers, and it's divided into 12 chapters. And the special thing about Bunge is that it does not include nominal rulers. So these nominal rulers are people who, are, uh, who by name are rulers, but they hold no true power. So for an example is Wai Dai, the second emperor of the Han Dynasty. And uh, instead of a Wai Dai chapter, we have a Lui Tai Ho chapter. So this is the, so here you can see all the different Bon Ge. And up to here, you should have a Wai Dai chapter, but since he held no true power, and it was his mother who called the shots, so we have a Lui Tai Ho Bon Ge. And one chapter I definitely recommend is Hon Yu Bonge. So Hon Yu was the de facto ruler from the period 206 BC to 202 BC. So during that time, he fought against the future founder of, of the Han Dynasty, and eventually he lost. But the story behind how he lost was uh, really kind of tragic and heroic. So you can take a look at this if you want to. So Hon Yu Bonge. This is a short commentary by Sima Qin himself on this section, so I'm not going to translate this, you can take a look at this if you want to. So the second section is called Biu. So Biu is kind of like a chart or a table, and in this section, uh, important events are placed in a tabular form, so you can see where these events fit into uh, the grand uh, timeline of Chinese, uh, Chinese history. So there are 10 charts in total. So again, this is uh, a commentary by Sima Xin himself on this section and just to give you a feel for it so here we have the 10 charts so if you cl click into one of them usually you have a short introduction and then you have this giant chart on where all these different events fit in so I wouldn't start reading this unless you were very familiar with what's going on in Chinese history I sometimes do take a look at this to get a feel of how uh, different events fit uh, together chronologically, so you can start reading this once you feel like you know enough of Chinese history. So the third section, Su, uh, is about the different customs and rites of different time periods, so they record all uh, different kinds of things like astrology and calendars and music and financial policies. So it records the historical evolution of these different aspects of society. So there are eight chapters in total, making it the shortest of all sections. So if you recall, uh, we have we had ten charts and we have twelve chapters for Bun Gate, but in this section we only have eight chapters, so it's the shortest of all. 
and again this is a commentary by C. Martin on this section. So no, most people don't really read this unless you're really specialized in, uh, in Chinese history. Now here comes the interesting section. So Saiga is about the history of important families and houses. So if you've watched Game of Thrones then you can sort of treat this like uh, the history of House Lannister and House Stark, so it's the same concept. So this part is about the history of important houses. So there are 30 chapters in total, and I definitely recommend Yut Wong Aoxin Saiga. So this chapter is about this person, Yut Wong Aoxin, and how he uh, suffered through a, a really tough period of uh, losing in a war and eventually uh, getting his revenge against a rival house. So again, this is what C. Martin comments about this section. And just to give you a feel for it, so for the Saiga, these are the 30 chapters. So you can see that all these are the names of different uh, different houses. And you can see that apart from these houses, Confucius himself also has a Saiga because he was way too important. So it's, this section isn't just limited to powerful houses. You have, uh, you have Confucius as well. So these are different uh, important people and houses in Chinese history. Tan Sip Saiga, Tan Sip is a person, is, is the first person to revolt against the Qin Dynasty. He failed eventually, but he gets his own Saiga. So that's that. So finally, we get to Li Jun, the fifth section. So it's, this section is about the biographies of important players in history. So there's 70 chapters in total, making it the longest. And most people regard it as the most diverse and intriguing section of all. So I definitely recommend Sun Zi Bihu De Jun. So if you've read The Art of War, it's written by Sun Zi, and that is the Sun Zi who wrote The Art of War. So in case you don't know, Art of War is a really important book on warfare that shaped uh, warfare for uh, throughout history. So if you're interested, you can read more about the person behind the book. And again, this is a comment by C. Martin on this section. And again, just to give you a feel for it, so we have the Li Jun and the 70 chapters. And here you have the biographies of a whole bunch of different people. So you have military generals like Sun Jinpei, uh, Sima Yangzhou, uh, Ba Hei Wang Xin. These are all military generals. Tin Dan, Lok Ai. So these are all military people. Mong Tim. And you also have like chapters on philosophers. Gong Zi Honfei and uh, Mang Zi Sanheng. And you have a chapter on Confucius' students. And you also have chapters on important politicians like Lei Xi, Lei Bat Wai, uh, Zheng Yi, Sou Chen, Sun Guan, these are all important politicians. And you even have a chapter on assassins. So this is a chapter on five important assassins and the stories involved with them. So you can take a look at this if you want. And the one I just recommended was this one. So you can take a look at this if you want. And that is all I have to say about the records. So happy reading.